thank you for joining us this afternoon for another uh, session of Advancing Intermodal, IANA's virtual education program. And today I'm very pleased to welcome our friend, Jean Bombach with uh, CCM, who's going to do a presentation on uh, the Next Generation South Atlantic Regional Chassis Pool. David, thank you. And to the association for the opportunity to present today as well as to the motor carriers and the other stakeholders who are present and have taken time out of their day to be here. Just a little background on myself. I have approaching 40 years of intermodal service. Uh, primarily, uh, most of my career was spent in Chicago, interfacing um, or working with the railroads and the motor carrier as a liaison or interface to efficiently interchange equipment be between the parties. I also own my own, started and owned my own intermodal trucking company, so I'm well familiar with the challenges uh, motor carriers face. Today's presentation is going to be the SACP 3.0 rollout, the next generation South Atlantic chassis pool. Our agenda today, we're going to uh, cover the changes in the SACP, the benefits, and the territory. As well, we're going to cover the navigation of our website where you can obtain important documents, such as the master uh, chassis user agreement, as well as the single published tariff uh, for all customers, motor carriers, beneficial cargo owners, and ocean carriers alike. As well, we're going to look at the registration portal, which is simple and user-friendly, uh, and why it's really in the best interest of the motor carriers to get into the system as soon as possible and register. So let's start with the changes in the SACP. What is SACP 3.0? It's the next generation interoperable chassis pool, and it's supported by the Jacksonville Port Authority, the North Carolina State Port Authority, as well as the Georgia Port Authority. In addition, the Ocean Carrier Equipment Management Association, which is a trade association made up of the 10 uh, 10 major ocean carriers, and of course, consolidated chassis management. These changes are being made in order to upgrade the South Atlantic chassis pool fleet, and we're going to introduce 50,000 plus new or refurbished high quality modern intermodal chassis to handle the international container trade between the major South Atlantic ports, as well as the inland rail terminals on the CSX and the NS. The table you're looking at below, uh, on the left, we have the components of the pool and our current version, SACP 2.0 in the middle. On our right, we see the new SACP 3.0. DCLI track, flex event, and knackback in today's uh, operation are both the contributors and providers of chassis. We assign usage based on what we receive from the various terminals to those entities who then in turn bill the various responsible par parties, whether it's motor carrier, BCO, or ocean carrier. As we move into SACP 3.0, the equipment provider will change, the contributor will change from uh, those entities I named to CCM. Currently, our management is oversight only of the operation. As we move forward into the new environment, CCM will have full service responsibility. Currently, our equipment average is 18 years of age. As we move into 3.0, we'll have newly refurbished or brand new equipment to inject into the operation. In terms of state service, Alabama, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida will remain in the scope of the SACP 3.0. In terms of facilities, it's the full scope of ramps, CYs, and ocean terminals within the geographic territory of the SACP mentioned above, and they will remain the same. I will footnote that the South Carolina port uh, has uh, disengaged from the SACP. They've started their own uh, chassis pool, the smart pool. CCM will maintain chassis in that market, and we'll address it a little further, but it's one of the benefits to interoperability that we'll cover in future slides. Again, currently, the rental agreements for chassis usage are with TRAC, DCLI, FlexiVan, and NACPAC. Going forward, CCM will engage with motor carriers for those agreements directly as the equipment provider. What are the benefits of the new pool? Well, the new pool is collaborative. Uh, it's supported by both the ports and the ocean carriers. 
while it doesn't mention motor carriers there, uh, we have taken uh, their voice into consideration. What we heard was the motor carriers in particular want new equipment, they want interoperability, and they want a single set of rules for all participants. Service, service remains as a priority for CCM in terms of repeatability and reliability and will continue as we move forward. We've covered the upgraded fleet, but it will be an all modern fleet, hub piloted wheels, radial tires, LED lights, anti-skid uh, braking systems, uh, and so on and so forth, making it a modern piece of equipment that the industry needs. Interoperability really affords the highest levels of efficiency for all stakeholders. Again, locations remain the full scope of the South Atlantic region and the facility network that is engaged today. Building will become simplified as it will be generated by a single provider. And we have a competitive rental pricing, one of the best in the, in the South Atlantic market, and it's based on a utility type structure. Here we have a geographic view of the territory on your left. On the right, again, it will be the port and rail facilities in these major cities uh, listed on your left-hand side. And I mentioned uh, the disengagement from the uh, South Carolina Port Authority and uh, Charleston in particular from the SACP. I just would like to point out uh, SACP chassis can't be dropped on the uh, Charleston terminal but no, nor can a Charleston chassis be dropped in Savannah, for example. And this is another indication of the uh, benefits of interoperability as the SACP will offer that convenience to motor carriers and stakeholders going forward. Now we're gonna take a look at our website. This is actually the landing page for ccmpool.com. Uh, we have our cursor highlighted over SACP 3.0 indicating that you can find the terms and conditions for our registration portal. You can find documents associated to SACP 3.0. You can even contact SACP and sign up for updates relative to the new program or to reach out to us with questions, concerns, or any direction that you may need, as well as accessing our registration portal. And if I click that link, the next page you would see is uh, all these boxes are uh, representative of the SACP 3.0 landing page. Up in the upper left is the top portion of it. As you move through uh, the screen, and I had to chop it up, uh, you will see to your right uh, quick links. And again, those documents are accessible to all parties, in particular to motor carriers. And we'll cover the uh, exact documents here in uh, uh, the next slide. But again, you are able to sign up for alerts as well as a link directly to the uh, motor care registration portal. Underneath it, if we click, click here to download SACP documents, we would see this page. And again, these are the documents that are available and we encourage motor carriers to take a, a advantage of reviewing these documents before you enter the portal. What you will find available is our published SACP 3.0 tariff, you will find FAQs on the SACP operation, the changes, the benefits, so on and so forth. You will find a list of what is required from you to enter the portal so that you will be able to capture that information to make most efficient use of your time before entering the portal. The next file that you have access to is actually an illustration, step-by-step -step process of the registration in case you need any uh, guidance as you're going through the system. Of course, we have a customer service staff uh, on standby to help you through that process as well. And then you actually have the master interchange agreement for motor carriers. And we encourage you to look at uh, both the uh, interchange agreement and the, and the tariff to completely understand the rules and your responsibilities for use of the SACP equipment. Again, in the upper left, just to point out, and I please take note of this, all this information that I just covered is available at ccmpool.com backslash SACP 3.0. You know, here is a just a snippet of the uh, master chassis interchange agreement for motor carriers. I assure you there's a few more paragraphs uh, not visible, but uh, we just wanted to uh, have a placeholder 
again, encourage you highly to review this before entering the portal. As you wait, make your way through the portal, the last step will be a contract that is forwarded to you for execution by DocuSign. It will be an electronic transfer of signatures. But again, you are able to download this information, review it in, during your time of convenience before you make your advancement to the portal as well as the SACP tariff, which really goes into detail about the operational responsibilities, uh, rate, rate structure, so on and so forth. What happens if you get a uh, parking or traffic violation really covers the details that you should be reviewing prior to the use of SACP chassis. So you have a clear understanding of your role and responsibilities uh, for using the equipment. Again, real quickly, I wanted to show you that the um, access to the portal, onboarding portal for motor carriers is available from our website, ccmpool.com at backslash SACP 3.0. By clicking the upper box, motor carriers register here. Once you do, you will see the CCM Consolidated Chassis Management logo. You do want to start with not registered yet. That will put you through to uh, request logon credentials. And beneath that, before you proceed to the actual application, is a list, again, available under SACP 3.0 as well, of what you need before you enter the portal so that you have all your facts and figures in front of you. We're not asking for any sensitive information, rather contacts that we can acquire that information as needed through direct communications with those individuals themselves. Before I turn it over to David for question and answers, I just wanted to uh, share what my view uh, has been from 40 years of intermodal service. For us as an industry to digest, to swallow and digest the mega units of transportation, such as the 10,000 TU to 24,000 TU vessels or the 12,000 foot intermodal trains, we have to ensure that the smallest unit of transportation, which is the intermodal driver, is efficient. Through the success of that driver, the network finds its success as well. This program, the SACP 3.0, is really designed to make that smallest unit of transportation as efficient as possible. And that's our position that the two most important assets are the driver, and the chassis. And we want to link those two things together so that we can make the motor carriers as efficient and successful as possible. I'd like to thank you for your time and participation today, and we will certainly answer your questions. Team, thank you so very much. We have, uh, we have a few questions, so I'll just go ahead and, and get started. Uh, first one is, and I think you kind of answered it, but we'll, this will give you a chance to clarify a little bit. Um, and the question is, are BCOs allowed uh, to contact you regarding their own pricing uh, for chassis? Well, they're allowed to contact us. I mean, the pricing that we've covered is the pricing that's available to all participants. But they are certainly able to contact us to discuss uh, being set up for use in the SACP. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, next, we have, uh, how does the number of days usage translate into number of chassis? I'm not quite sure I understand that. Well, I mean, I think the usage days that we look at are total number of chassis that motor carrier had in their possession or in any entity and the times the number of days those chassis stay, uh, stay out. So, you know, it is just a uh, accumulation of usage cycles in terms of usage days that we're, we are tracking for the tier structure. Thank you uh, for explaining that. Um, the uh, next question is, uh, the, ra the rate tier will only take over after you reach that level of usage per year, resetting all to tier one each October. Is that correct? It is correct. And do you have to uh, have a motor carrier number to join the SACP or will you have a DOT number uh, be adequate? DOT number would be adequate. Let me see what else we have coming in here. Will you provide the slide deck? Yes, I can answer that one. 
uh, not to take your thunder away, Jean, but uh, I, yes, this presentation will be available uh, uh, in probably less than a week. Uh, we have uh, available uh, to, to folks on the IANA website, intermodal.org under uh, education on demand. Um, next question is, is how many chassis are in the pool and does the contract guarantee chassis availability? Well, currently we're just at around 52,000 uh, chassis. And so we're still reviewing the fleet, uh, ensuring that uh, we, the optimal number is reached. Again, that is a moving picture. It will change you know, constantly throughout the year. We work with all the stakeholders to get the uh, uh, best and most detailed forecasting information. Uh, so that we can right size the fleet and be prepared uh, when uh, additional chassis are envisioned being needed so that they can handle the the, the business um, that will be in front of us. I'm sorry, there was a part two to that question, David. Uh, part two uh, was chassis availability. Yeah, guaranteed. I mean, uh, again, um, you know, our core focus is to make sure that we have the uh, right number of chassis in the right condition at the right place. Um, I don't know what is meant by a guarantee, but again, uh, our core mission is to ensure adequate availability at all times, at all locations, and uh, equipment that is in the right condition. And next for you, you're a popular guy this afternoon. Uh, so as a motor carrier, we set up with SACP as we did with FlexiBand and Track Intermodal? Well, it would actually be with CCM, but yes. And are there any changes to the maintenance policy? Not at this time. Specifically over the road? No, we will still uh, be utilizing downtime fleet service as our over-the-road provider, as they are currently today. And we have a number of subsidiaries under our company. Would days of usage be total for all subsidiaries or would it be calculated separately for each one? Well, registration would require each company go in individually. And if there is a clear lineage of association between companies, we would uh, work with the organizations to aggregate that usage to the benefit of the organization. Who will be billed for repairs, the contract holder or the trucking company? Well, as uh, today, um, in an over-the-road situation, uh, if the uh, determination is made that it is driver abuse or damage, the over-the-road provider will bill the motor carrier. If it's understood to be owner's responsibility or normal wear and tear maintenance, they will bill us directly. And that same hold, uh, would hold true if return to a rail yard and or a marine terminal with damages on it. Uh, we would make the repairs and then uh, issue invoices to a re responsible party if it was deemed to be damaged. Very good. And the last one that we have right now is, will there be a reservation system to reserve chassis or is it FCFS? First come, first serve. Well, no, we have a reservation system today. It will uh, change a view to some degree. I mean, but it will still be uh, within our portal that we were um, called ccmshipments.com. Uh, currently, uh, we run those uh, bookings through our uh, booking application, but it will move to the portal just alongside, again, access from the same uh, webpage that I mentioned, ccmshipments.com but it will be under a different um, portal that is referred to as reservations. So you would go to the same, through the same avenue to get there. It's just one box over. That will do it for our questions. Um, if you have any further questions, you can always submit them uh, to Gene. I believe his contact information is on the slide deck, or you can also send them to us here at IAN and we'll make sure to forward them along. Um, Gene, do you have any last words or are you good? I just would like to thank uh, the association and all the uh, participants today for your time and consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Gene. And just to remind everyone, uh, Intermodal Expo registration is open uh, September 11 to 13, uh, just a few short weeks away in Long Beach, California. 
Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to email us at info at intermodal.org. And don't forget to visit the website. Thank you all very much. Everyone have a great afternoon. Thank you.